Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas, north of Las Vegas. Uh, we're out here at the uh, the range again, and I brought uh, my two Palmetto State Armories. And I would say about two or three years ago, I started getting interested in, in Palmetto, um, mainly when I found out that most of their uh, machine work was being done by Aero Precision. So once I discovered that, I thought, well, Palmetto can't be too bad if Aero Precision is doing all their machining for them. Or maybe not all of them, but most of it. So anyway, um, these have turned out to be pretty good rifles. And I thought while we're uh, waiting for a little more daylight so I can see the target a little better, uh, I thought we'd just talk about the rifles real quick. Um, we'll start at the butt stocks on both of them. Um, this is the Magpul SLK model, and it's very slim. It's um, It has one spot here for a strap if you don't want to install the QD. And then uh, this is your standard SL, and it comes with a QD and two slots for your straps. And uh, so that's mainly the difference. They're, they're pretty much identical. This is just a little bit bigger in dimension. And like I said, it comes with a built-in QD. This one does not. You have to uh, mount a QD. Okay, so um, like I said, they're pretty much 100% Palmetto State Armory. I'm running uh, Aero Precision charging handles on both of them. And um, both of them are stainless barrel, 16 inch, mid-length gas systems. Now this is a dissipator model. Um, this is just the front sight base. If you know a little bit about dissipators, you know that this is not the actual gas block. The gas block is at the mid-length position underneath the handguard in the same position as this one. So uh, we just did a quick measurement using my hand. So the gas block would be right in here. And the reason that they came up with this idea was to get a full length rifle handguard and to get the front sight out a little bit more to help in uh, more precise uh, aiming using iron sights. So that's kind of the idea behind the dissipator. Now I have another dissipator model that's made by Wyndham Weaponry and it uses the, uh, the actual carbine length gas system. It does not use the mid-length. So that's more true to the, the actual dissipator design. These are Nikon Black Force 1000s. They're illuminated, one to four power. Um, Nikon does not make rifle scopes anymore. And uh, they decided to get out of the business. I don't know why, I, I think they were doing okay. I think they were making money. And uh, I think most of their product line was, uh, it was fairly decent. So I, I don't know why they got out of the business, but um, I think they got out of the rifle scope business about two years ago. So um, yeah, these are the last of the Mohicans here. Um, the illumination on these is very good. I would say, you could say daylight bright. Um, some of the other illuminated uh, little power scopes that I have, uh, the illumination is terrible. You can't use them as their intended purpose. Um, let's see, I don't know what else to really talk about other than I put both of these rifles together about three, four years ago for under $500, just the rifles, not, not the scope and the upgraded butt stocks. But, um, Palmetto has since then really raised their prices. So there's no way you're going to put a complete rifle together, uh, for under $500 now. But I think I, with background check, tax, shipping, um, everything to put these rifles together, I think it came in at 468 each. And, uh, Back then, Palmetto had really good prices. Okay, well, like I said, uh, just waiting for a little bit more sun to come up and then uh, we'll start doing some shooting. I got these rifles in, uh, roughed in about a couple years ago. Uh, I got the iron, iron sights dialed in um, pretty good and I got the scopes roughed in. So today I'm gonna try to get a little bit more uh, precise on the scopes and that might be hard to do because I'm shooting Winchester white box ammo, 5.56. So this stuff here, it's, I mean, it works, it's 55 grain, but it's generally kind of considered plinking ammo. I mean, if you, if you get better than two MOA with that stuff, you're probably doing really good. So anyway, we'll get started shooting here in just a second. 
Okay, I forgot to mention in the first clip that these are second focal plane, so the reticle stays the same size no matter what power you're on. Um, second focal plane, you generally have to be on the uh, max power or upper power ranges for the, uh, the subtensions or the, the hash marks on a reticle to be accurate for uh, any kind of compensation. Um, the other thing, uh, 416 stainless barrels, uh, one and seven twist. And both these rifles are chambered for um, 556 five, NATO. So let's do some shooting. Like I said, if I do anything better than 2 MOA today, I'll be happy. Okay, I got to get some better uh, rifle rests. I keep saying I'm going to, and I never do, but um, the reticle center dot is covering the target at 50 yards like like perfectly so I don't know could be a good thing could be a bad thing but anyway let's see what we can do with this wobbly uh wobbly mess we're gonna fire one round just see where it goes Okay, I'm gonna run down real quick and see where we're at because with this four power scope, even at 50 yards, I can't see can't see the bullet hole. So I'll run down there real quick, just see where that first one went. All right, we're on safety. Pointed off to the somewhere else besides where I'm walking. Ha <laughs> ha Holy crap, right there, first round. That's amazing. I was not expecting that. Let's see if we can do it again. Okay, if I get anywhere near the bullseye on any of the next two shots, then we're gonna call this rifle good as far as getting the scope zeroed in. But I was just like, wow, first shot, that hardly ever happens. Not for me anyway. All right, here we go. Two more shots. cloudy day so the front sight is kind of just showing up in the bottom of the scope but that's just how it is when it's a nice bright day you won't even notice it but today I can see it it's not interfering with the bullseye or anything Let's go down and see what it looks like. Okay, here's the last two shots right next to each other. Um, pretty sure it's just me and my uh, my bobbly wobbly wrist, but uh, I think I'm gonna have to take back everything I said about Winchester white box. Actually, shoots pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna do uh, three more shots on a dissipator and a. Like I said earlier, if it's anywhere around the bullseye, I'm, I'm calling this good. I mean, I'm kind of surprised so far how accurately this, this Palmetto is shooting. Uh, if I had a better rest, I know I could be doing a lot better. It's kind of like right as the trigger breaks, sometimes I can see the, the rifle just start to move around a little bit. All right, here we go, three more shots.
always helps if you have it on fire. And then I always keep pulling the trigger harder and harder and it looks like I'm flinching and jerking but I'm just trying to figure out what's wrong with the rifle until I realize I left it on safety. All right, here we go. Go see. Okay, I'm kind of more consistently over to the left. Um, got another one in the same hole. These two here came in low for some reason. I noticed that as the uh, I got more cloud cover, um, it was kind of hard to see exactly where my uh, my reticle was. So uh, I can I got like all kinds of excuses, but anyway, I'm gonna move the windage over uh, a couple of clicks, and we'll do three more rounds, and then I'm gonna call this thing good. And I'm really surprised at how well this dissipator is shooting. Um, it looks to be about two MOA right now. If I had a better rest, I know that rifle could do better. So I'm uh, pretty happy with my $468 Palmetto State Armory. Okay, so I moved the windage a couple clicks to the right, and uh, I think that's going to get us a little closer on windage. I'll do the rest off camera, and then I'll just show you the results on a target. But like I was saying earlier, I'm I'm pretty happy with this rifle. I mean, for a budget-friendly AR, I mean, this thing's shooting pretty straight. Then uh, next up will be this one. Okay, I knew that happened when I pulled the trigger. So call it a flyer if you want, but that was me. There's my last two shots. So um, yeah, I, I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but I'm really happy with that Palmetto Dissipator. And 55 grain Winchester white box seems to agree with it. All right, so we'll get the, uh, the carbine going. All right, first shot with the carbine. I think I can see that one. It's a little bit high and to the left. Okay, I know for a fact I pulled that last one, but we'll go down and see what we did. Wow, carbine's doing a little bit better than a dissipator. That's that last one. And I knew when I pulled the trigger that that I went a little bit high with it. Um, kind of surprisingly because the trigger on the dissipator is a little bit better than on this carbine. The carbine's pretty notchy. And the dissipator's kind of hard and it's got kind of a creepy break. But um, I'm, I'm gonna call this good. I don't see any reason to waste any more ammunition. Um, especially the way things are today. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with these results. I mean, I'm at 50 yards, so I probably need to drop the elevation down a little bit to where it was would be hitting here for 100 yards zero. But um, yeah, not bad. Okay, so I, I'm pretty happy with these Palmetto State Armories. I mean, I'm really surprised at, at how well they shoot they they do shoot straight so what i'm probably going to do is now that I, i'm convinced that the rifles are, are solid i'm probably going to upgrade to some better triggers because i know i could tighten up those groups and uh 
this is what I shot today to get two two rifles zeroed in at uh, 50 yards so if this was like a year and a half two years ago I'd be going through a hundred rounds um, just planking and but I don't do that anymore not until uh, things uh, significantly change anyway um, Pete North Las Vegas over and out